Hello everybody and welcome back to Beanie Boo Safari. I've had a sudden crafty urge lately and I've recently acquired this amazing fabric that I want to make something out of. So today I'm going to be making a Victorian Beanie Boo ball gown. Here's the design concept. I was going to do a nice digital drawing based off that, but I got too tired planning the dress out that I just wanted to start making it. So to get that extra poof that we want, we're going to have to add some wire on the bottom, kind of acting like a hoop skirt, to get the volume we need. But wait, wait, wait. Before we get into making the dress, we need to have a model so that I know the dimensions of the Beanie Boos. Fits the criteria. We need to have some ribbon to attach the wire to, so then we can attach the wire onto the Beanie Boo. And then after that, we can start forming some fabric layers to make it look like a dress. I've got this black ribbon, and now I'm going to measure it to the waist of my Beanie Boo. I'm leaving a gap for an elastic to go underneath the paws, so that it's easy to take the dress on and off. And I'm going to leave a little bit extra so that I can fold over the edges of the ribbon and glue it down so it doesn't fray. Now I'm going to take a little bit of elastic and sew it on each end of the ribbon to make it a full circle that can fit comfortably around the Beanie Boo's waist. I'm starting to question if this ribbon will even hold this elastic on, so I'm going to try this all again with a different ribbon or strap to hold the elastic together. Okay, so I've done all that and now we've got a waistband. It is really hard to sew neatly on such a tiny scale with a sewing machine, so I tried it on one side but it looks so messy I decided to do it by hand on the other. The only thing that really matters is that it's strong and it holds up nicely. Okay, now it's wire time! Kinda looks like a slinky. I cut off a piece of wire and I'm taking advantage of the natural curve because it was in a circle to help me shape the form of the hoop skirt for Beanie Boos. <laughs> this is going to look really weird at first, but it's like the skeleton for the dress to go on, so just trust me. I'm making a little mock-up to cover the dress in something to help me envision what it's going to look like when trying to make the boning look right. It one half of the way done with the wiring. I'm going to have seven wires in total, three on this side, one in the middle, and three on the other. Now it's time to make the other three wires the exact same as these so that it's symmetrical. Okay, it's break time. First I had some applesauce and then I played fetch with my dog. <laughs> and we're back. Now let's finish bending metal wires. I believe that all of the pieces for the skeleton are assembled. It turns out I like the look of five wires better than the shape of eight, so I don't need these two. We have the largest wire in the middle and two second largest wires beside the middle one, along with two of these smaller wires to go on the ends. You can do whatever size and whatever shape you want for your boning. It all depends on what kind of dress you want to make. But if you want to do the exact same thing as me, I'll show you the measurements for mine. For the singular large ring, from the lowest point to the highest point was 6.4 centimeters and the point where it's the thickest is 6.8 centimeters. The little bend here is roughly one centimeter and the whole perimeter of this bit is 12 and a half centimeters long. Then for the medium size from the bottom to the very top is 5.6 centimeters and on the widest bit is 5.6 centimeters as well. Again the tick mark is one centimeter and the perimeter is 10 centimeters. You need to make two of those. Finally, the last two small pieces have a height of 5.3 centimeters, a width of 4.1 centimeters, the tick mark is one centimeter, and the perimeter, not including the tick mark, is nine centimeters. Make two of those. Hopefully this gives you a rough idea of the boning. It's kind of hard because they're round, but hopefully this helps. Now it's time to glue these little hooks onto the waistband so it stays in place. I'm going to use hot glue for this. I want the waistband to be on slick when I'm hot gluing it so I know that everything will look right. But I don't want to get hot glue on slick so I'm going to put a plastic bag on her. Okay, everything is hot glued in place. Now let's take it off slick and see what it looks like. It looks crazy. 
I'm also gonna put some hot glue on the back of it just to firm it up and make sure that it's not floppy when it's not off the Beanie Boo. The only problem is that the middle one wiggles a little bit, but I'm just hoping that that won't be a problem. And you know what, if it falls off, it can be fixed with um, more hot glue. So guess what? It's the time you've all been waiting for. The time where we actually get to beautify this with fabric. You can see on my sketch that there's a bottom layer and a top layer. The bottom layer I'm thinking is going to be white and then the top layer is going to be this pretty fabric. I'm going to take this fabric and make another mock-up more exact to what I want the bottom layer of the dress to be like. Okay you guys, it's been a few hours and I'm finally done the rough draft for the base layer of the dress. I'm kind of obsessed. Alright, so now that I've worked everything out, it's time to make the real dress and also try to explain to you guys how to make it yourself. I know that this is a pretty complicated sewing video, but you're welcome to try to follow along with a hot glue gun if you don't know how to sew and don't have a sewing machine. The first thing I did was cut out a rectangle of fabric that is 8.5 inches by 1 inch. The fabric that I was using is reused from a garment, so it luckily already has one hemmed side. Go ahead and fold it over lengthwise, good side to good side. Then sew all along here and flip it inside out. So this is the waistband. The next piece of fabric that I cut out is a rectangle of eight and a half inches by seven inches. Now you need to draw a semicircle at the top of your rectangle. This lid has a diameter of about 10 and a half centimeters. Now cut it out, but leave about one half of an inch allowance before the line. Now I drew two darts that are three centimeters apart from each other and both a little over half a centimeter wide. Take one of the darts and fold the triangle in half. Then sew along this line. Now it should look like this when you unfold it. And like this on the back. Once you've done both the darts, it should look something like this on the bad side and this on the good side. As a disclaimer, always be checking and rechecking to see if this fits properly and you might want to do a practice one just before to see if there's any alterations you need to make. I'm going to try mine on now. This curve should wrap around um, your Beanie Boo's waist nicely and these darts should stop before it starts going downwards. The next thing we're going to do is attach the strap to the actual dress. You're going to want to straighten out this curve as much as possible and put the good side of your fabric to the good side of your band together and closely match up their edges. Then sew a straight line down. Once that is sewn you should be able to flip it over and flip the band upward and this is what it should look like. I'm going to iron along here so that the band doesn't keep trying to pop back down. Try it on your beanie boo, see how it looks. Almost looks like a wedding dress. Is to add two more darts, one here and one here. For this I will give you the exact measurements that I used for the darts, but you're going to have to try it out on your boning to see what will look the best. Try the dress on your beanie boo inside out, play around with it and see what looks best. And if you have these long triangles of extra fabric when you're pinching things and playing with things, that's a sign that you need to put a dart there and all you do is sew along this edge and when you flip it inside out it will look kind of like this like there'll be a seam there but there'll be less fabric and it will be more cinched in it definitely takes a lot of trial and error so that's another reason why it's very good to make a rough draft i'll show you what i'm doing for mine as you can see i've experimented with a lot of different lines trying things out and pinning it on the beanie boo to see if it looks good but I think I've decided on this and I'm gonna see if it works. Remember when sewing darts, we fold it in half and sew along this line. Done the sewing, now we flip it to the right side. It'll look like this. And let's try it on. Hmm, it hangs still a little too loose. I'm gonna have to tighten it up a little bit. This is basically just the intense trial and error process. All right, I'm going to try to sew a little bit wider, like following this line. Attempt number two, let's see how it looks. It's definitely more boxy, but it has more shape. I kind of like it. I'm gonna try it on the other side now. The dimensions for the new dart that I made is just over two centimeters at the top, four centimeters at the bottom, 
and it is still 7 centimeters long and at a 50 degree angle coming off from the corner. So we fold it in half and sew along this line. Alright, I sewed along the line. It looks like this. Now let's try it on slick. Ooh, it looks cool. Alright, now the last step to finishing the bottom layer of this skirt is to cut off the extra fabric on the bottom and hem it. How I'm going to do this is flip my skirt inside out and put it on slick again. Take a pencil and mark all the way around the skirt where I would like the skirt to stop, leaving a little bit of room to hem the sides of the skirt. And then, after that, proceed to hem the skirt. Pinning your work down really, really helps keep things in place. Anyways, my hem is completely finished and I'm just gonna trim off the excess fabric around the edge. There we go. This is what it turned out looking like. I'm really, really happy with it. It kind of looks like a wedding dress right now, and I actually love it. This dress can literally double as a wedding dress. But this bottom layer is not quite done yet. I want to add some frills around the edges. I measured the edge of my skirt and cut out a thin piece of fabric double that length. Now that that's done, I complete my fabric while attaching it to the rim of my dress. Once I've cut off the extra fabric on the band and attached an elastic, let's take a step back and review what we've done so far. We've made metal boning attached to a waistband with hot glue to give our dress some volume, and we've completely finished our first layer! It turned out really nicely, even though it's a little bit messy in some places, I really like it. Now I'm going to add another component to this dress. This is basically a finished dress and I'm definitely going to use it as one, but for this specific video to fit the ball gown vibe, I'm going to add a top layer. And they're going to be separate and detachable, just like I decided not to attach the boning to the dress so that you can use the boning for other dresses and switch out the top. But first, before we do all of that, it's time to make puff sleeves, of course. To make poofy sleeves, cut out a rectangle that is 12 centimeters by 5 centimeters. Border it with a zigzag stitch so things don't start fraying. Fold over each long side about a centimeter. It's done, sew along these two lines, making two little tubes to feed the elastic through. I've got two pieces of stretchy thread that are both about 10 centimeters long. I'm going to take one of those and thread it to, through a big needle and then thread that needle through one of the little channels and tie it closed. Then I'll repeat for the other side. The last thing we need to do is flip it inside out, find the seam, and sew along it. Then you flip it back the right way and you've got one puffy sleeve. Now all you need to do is make a second one, pop it on your Beanie Boo's arms, and you've got an adorable dress with puffy sleeves! Okay, now finally there's a thing stopping us from making the top layer of the ball gown dress. Things are going to start off pretty similar to the first white base layer. I've got a rectangle of 8 inches by 7 inches. And I'm going to take that same lid that I used to trace a circle on the other dress that is 10 centimeters by diameter. Yours could be slightly different. And make a semicircle. Now cut some slits in the 1 inch radius, not going all the way to the line, but almost. This is what it should look like. Now take some string matching your fabric, I'm using embroidery thread, and glue it on the line you drew. This will help keep it in place for when we sew it on. Now while the glue is still wet, to keep these flaps in place, fold them downward like this onto the glue. Now we're going to pull this string aside and fold this over twice and sew straight down here, proceeding all the way down where the string is and then folding over this twice as well and sewing down that, all in one big run. Now we do the same two darts that we did on the first layer. It's kind of hard to see here, but you know what they look like from the first layer. They're three centimeters apart and a little over half a centimeter wide at the top and tapering down. And you know what we do with them. We fold each triangle in half and sew along the line. Now it should look like this on the back and this on the front. Next, try on your Beanie Boo dress with the top layer inside out. Then, just like you did on the first layer, trace where you would like the end of your dress to be all around the sides. And then cut it out, leaving a little bit of room for the seam to see the lines that I drew because of the patterned fabric, but this is the shape that I ended up going for. It swoops in, then out, then back in, and then a straight line at the bottom. 
Now I'm going to fold over the excess fabric on the line and sew a hem. And of course, if your fabric frays, do a zigzag stitch along the edge. All right, once you're done all that, this is what it should look like, kind of. To stop it from looking boxy, what I wanted to do, instead of adding darts like we did on the other one like this, I wanted to collect it at the back, kind of like this. If you want, you can go ahead and do the same thing as the underneath and have it basically just be like another layer but slightly smaller, so you can still see the ruffles underneath, but this is what I'm gonna do. Of course, basically everything in this dress is optional and changeable, you can literally make it whatever kind of style you want. Take some embroidery floss and threading it through a thick needle. Then I'm going to tie a knot at the end and grab these two bits of the dress and sew a few stitches to hold it together. Now to add some extra interest, I'm gonna iron these two flaps backward like this. It's almost done and looking adorable. With this string, I've decided to keep it long and wrap it around the Beanie Boo's waist a few times because it gives a little bit of red to tie in the little bit of red on the fabric. Now, basically the last step is to find a little gem or rhinestone or charm or bow or something, I haven't found something yet, to put on the very back where the stitch is here. I've decided to go with this cute little gem to put it right here. You are literally almost done this dress and I'm getting really excited. The last tweak I'm gonna make is I'm gonna put some hot glue dollops on the ends of these wires so that they don't make a scratchy noise every time the Beanie Boo walks. The full dress consists of three main pieces. We have the boning, the first layer, and the second statement layer. And then of course we have the two puff sleeves which look like tiny scrunchies kind of. Take your Beanie Boo and grab the first layer, so the white base, and put it around their waist. Now with just this layer on, it can totally be a poofy dress. It doesn't even need the boning, but if you want extra poof, add it on. First layer does not fit over the boning, so we have to put on the first layer first and then the boning underneath. So step two is to slip the boning on like this. This is basically a two-in-one dress. This can definitely function as a dress by itself, but if you wanna add extra pizzazz, add layer two. You simply just place a layer on top and either tie the string like this or wrap it around the waist of your Beanie Boo a few times before tying it. I purposely made this top piece detachable so you can make multiple versions of this with multiple different styles and make completely different dresses. Now the last step to this dress is to add the puff sleeves. This is how it looks. And don't forget to accessorize as well. Perfect. How well do you think I accomplished my vision? I personally think I did a uh, pretty good job, especially because I literally had zero clue what I was doing the whole time. <laughs> Anyways, montage time. that is it for today's video. I really, really hope that this tutorial will be of use to you. Of course, if you have any questions at all about anything, feel free to put them in the comments below and know that you can personalize and stylize this dress in any way you want and make it any theme and colors you want. Let me know if you find any other cool ways to make your dress fancier. And for those of you who have Etsy shops and such, I just ask that you don't sell any of the dresses that you make while following this tutorial. But other than that, you're free to use it however you want. Hope you like it, and thanks for watching. Don't worry, be happy, and goodbye!